One of the most expressive and complex characters on the roster, Yoshimitsu is Tekken's resident trickster, requiring a lot of creativity and experience to play well. Success with Yoshimitsu hinges on your ability to constantly stay unpredictable, strong conditioning skills, and hard reads coupled with quick decision making so playing as everyone's favorite space ninja can be quite a headache. On the other hand, a skilled Yoshimitsu might make you question your very fundamentals. Perhaps more than any other character, Yoshimitsu really allows you to get into and mess with the opponent's head. And besides, who wouldn't want to play as a sword-wielding cephalopod? the most unblockables in the game. Powerful mix-ups and okizeme. Flash allows Yoshimitsu to punish normally safe moves and interrupt normally uninterruptible strings. A diverse moveset, giving Yoshimitsu tools for every situation and the player lots of ways to express their creativity. Yoshimitsu is one of the only characters with the ability to regenerate health. Weak set of basic tools. Poking game is risky. The majority of Yoshimitsu's moves are highly situational and specialized. Low damage output lacks a generic down jab from standing while in his default stance, though he does gain one while in no sword stance. Struggles against opponents with knowledge on Yoshimitsu's capabilities. Flash is one of Yoshimitsu's most unique and game-bending tools. It is the fastest move in the game, coming out in just 6 frames while in Yoshimitsu's default stance. It can punish moves that would otherwise be safe, for example, Elisa's running 3-4 can be launched at minus 7 on block, or interrupt some pressure strings, such as Dragunov's down back 2-1-2 and also acts as an easy but damaging option select against certain abusable mix-ups, like Josie's crouch dash. When Yoshimitsu's back is against the wall and pushback is nullified, the number of moves he can launch punish with Flash skyrockets. Flash can even be used when back turned. A common mistake most beginners make is to treat Flash like a reversal of sorts, limiting its use to a simple defensive or panic move. Flash is a mid-attack that Yoshimitsu can use to complement his offense. You can set up your own flash traps and condition the opponent to sit still. Flash is even guaranteed after certain moves, for example, up forward two to a while standing flash when up close and in front of the opponent. Provided Yoshimitsu is in range, Flash can act as a frame trap against opponents that habitually press the attack by using slower moves when they have frame advantage. For example, 
opponents that fish for combos with safe down forward twos. Having multiple possible inputs, each with different frames and ranges, as well as being axis dependent at times, Flash is arguably the most difficult move to master in the entire history of Tekken, but it is also one of the most rewarding. Yoshimitsu's default Flash comes out in six frames, but performing it by quickly tapping four followed by one, similar to Horang's Backlash or Mishima Backflop, it becomes one frame slower, coming out now in seven frames, but the range slightly increases. This is sometimes referred to as a Kara Flash. While in no sword stance, a standard flash is now eight frames, but the range is even bigger than a Kara Flash. And doing a Kara Flash while in no sword stance results in the slowest but longest range flash, coming out in nine frames. For max damage block punishment, you can also hold forward a bit or do a micro dash before using flash to extend the range even further. For example, hold forward slightly, then do a no sword stance Kara flash to launch punish Dragunov's 1-2-1 on block. Flash can also be used inside combos while in no sword stance to get back into default stance if you want to, which as a bonus often results in more damaging combos. But it is extremely inconsistent and hard to do, so we wouldn't advise it if you're playing online. One more note is that being off axis to the left or the opponent's right makes it slightly easier to connect Flash. Conversely, Flash will sometimes whiff when Yoshimitsu is off axis to the right. And finally, it makes Yoshimitsu's powerful Okizeme game, which we'll examine in detail over the course of this video, even more intimidating. Since Yoshimitsu can launch punish spring kicks with Flash, no matter how shallow or deep they are blocked. This means the opponent has to be extra cautious about how they get up. Despite being such a unique, game-altering tool, take care when using Flash. Aside from its incredibly short range, it's also launch punishable on block. As a safe, fast mid-punch, down forward one is a fundamental poking tool for most of the cast. Yoshimitsu's one is quite linear, but at plus five on hit, it can offer some nice setups such as down forward one to a sidestep one. This also has extensions to keep opponents from pressing buttons. The second hit of down forward one two is just his regular forward two, but done as an extension. More on this later. This string is mid high, safe on block, combos on counter hit, and if the second hit connects on counter hit by itself, will lead to a screw combo. Use with care though, as it doesn't jail. So if the opponent ducks after blocking down forward one, you will likely get launched. Down forward one four is Yoshimitsu's 13 frame punisher. This is a mid mid natural combo string. Unfortunately, it jails on block, so you can't use it to catch out opponents who try to duck down forward one two. In this case, just go for another down forward one. Generally, this should only be used in guaranteed punishment situations, since at minus 14, it's very punishable by certain characters. Yoshimitsu's standing two is a multi-purpose jab. Unlike a regular jab, it's actually minus one on block, so can't really be used as a pressure tool by itself. And it's also very linear. The string extensions are what make it worthwhile though. You can do two in a row with two two, which has almost the exact same frame data as just doing a single two. This is a natural combo with the option to go into Kincho stance with 2-2, two, 1-2. Two, this transition is especially useful if 2-2 two, two hits, since you have a nice plus five to work with. There's also 2-3, which only combos on counter hit. This is a scary tool to deal with at the wall though, because the three wall splats and tracks both ways. Just be careful, as the three is a high and also unsafe on block. 
2 down 3 is a natural combo string that ends in a low. This is a useful move to frustrate and chip away at the opponent, while also occasionally threatening with an unexpected fully crouch mix-up. Don't get too crazy though, as this is negative even on hit, but at minus 12 on block, can't be launched by any character, so a skilled opponent will most likely try to down parry predictable attempts. Like most jabs, this comes out in 10 frames, so 2 2 1 plus 2 and 2 down 3 can be used as alternate 10 frame punishers to 1 1 to slip into Keen Cho and fully crouch mix ups, respectively. Lastly, there's 2 1, and this has its own special use and will be explained in more detail in the situational move section. Let's now take a look at Yoshimitsu's strings from his one jab. Whereas strings stemming from 2 are more focused on enforcing mix ups, so best used on defensive players, strings from 1 are more counter hit baiting in nature, so best used on aggressive players. 1-1 one, one is Yoshimitsu's go-to 10-frame punisher. It does good damage, and on hit leaves opponents in crouch and at minus 4. Since it's safe on block and a high mid, it's also a good move to throw out every once in a while, especially since if the second hit connects on counter hit, it will knock the opponent down for either a guaranteed down back 4 or to set up Yoshimitsu's lethal Okizeme game. We'll explore this in more detail later. On block, this leaves you very negative at minus 8, but can be a good setup for flash if the opponent wants to take advantage with a low or slow mid. 1-2 is a 10 frame natural comboing high mid string and is mostly used to stop enemies from entering your space when you need something faster than down forward 1 or down forward 4. Though it gives negative frames even on hit and can be sidewalked right. 1-2 does have a third extension with 1-2-1 one, one, and if that last hit connects on counter hit, it knocks the opponent down. On open ground, you can pick up with down forward 1 plus 2 while standing 4, back 2 1, king cho forward 2. This extension is a great tool against opponents who are eager to take advantage of the negative frames of 1 2. Unfortunately, it can't be delayed though, so you have to commit to the string before the 1 2 is over. And despite being safe on block, it is high, so it can be ducked and launched quite easily. Down forward 4 is a fast, long-ranged mid-kick, perfect for space control, and is Yoshimitsu's 12-frame punisher when outside jab range. This is a great move to end rounds with, and also keep the enemy at bay, though do take care, as with most down forward 4s, it is very linear. Back 2 is a mid with decent range and powerful albeit risky, extensions. Back 2-2 two, two is a natural string and Yoshimitsu's best non-launching punisher. On block, the second hit can be ducked, but due to Back 2's deceptive animation, this is easier said than done. If you think the opponent will duck, you can go for Back 2-1, which is a mid-mid natural combo on counter hit that ends in a huge launcher, similar to his crouch dash 1. This is a big commitment though, as it is launch punishable by the majority of the cast. Yoshimitsu can go into Kincho afterwards, which on paper makes it safer, but in practice, since you can't block while in Kincho, you're still getting launch punished anyway. The stance transition is mainly just for combos. Both extensions from back 2 are highly delayable, which can be used to catch out trigger happy opponents. Though, if you delay back 2 1 even just a bit, it won't combo on counter hit anymore. Back 2 by itself can also go directly into Kincho by pressing 1 plus 2. Although back 2 is just barely safe on block at minus 9, due to its dangerous, delayable, and temptingly punishable extensions, 
Yoshimitsu can sometimes get away with using it as a poke into things like quarter circle back one plus two due to quote unquote mental frame advantage, though this is certainly not abusable. Back two can also be used as a pickup tool in combos, as it makes comboing into crouch dash two more consistent. Yoshimitsu's lows from standing are pretty subpar in terms of damage, and none of them leave him at plus frames on hit, so can't really be used to enforce pressure. Still, they are an important part of his admittedly lackluster poking game. Down three and down four are low kicks that crush highs and put Yoshimitsu into fully crouched for mix-ups. Though of course, you'll have to be sporadic and unpredictable since you're left at minus frames. Of these two moves, down three does more damage, but is slower and much more unsafe, being launch punishable by the majority of the cast. Down four, on the other hand, is weaker, faster, and can only be launch punished by Josie because of the small pushback it creates and Yoshimitsu's low hitbox. Down back four is Yoshimitsu's only low that has a standing animation, so it does leave him open to being counter hit by fast highs. It's also slightly slower than down three, but on the plus side, it isn't launch punishable by anyone and is his most damaging low from standing, if only marginally. Back three and back four are some of the better evasive moves in the game, since Yoshimitsu spins backwards and sideways, with back three to the left and back four to the right. It allows Yoshimitsu to easily escape situations an ordinary sidestep can't. For example, back three will evade most of Josie's options out of switch starts, even the uninterruptible switch one, but not the homing switch three. Multiple spins will even evade some homing moves and guarantee a crouch dash one or rue kick if the enemy whiffs something big. Only use this move in emergencies though, as it sacrifices five points of Yoshimitsu's health with each spin, capping at five spins. If you're close to getting rage though, it can be a handy way to self-sufficiently harm yourself. After five spins, Yoshimitsu will get dizzy and fall to the ground, so be careful not to overuse it. Note that this also applies to all of Yoshimitsu's spinning strings, back one, down back two, and down back three. There is an interesting glitch regarding Yoshimitsu's evasive spin, and it's best explained in Level Up Your Game's Yoshimitsu Morning Bread and Butter. The link can be found in the description. To make it short, the first evasive spin has a built-in delay that you can cancel by doing a forward dash input during its recovery. This allows Yoshimitsu to effectively cut the recovery time in half. This is especially useful for punishing whiffs after successfully evading a move. Finally, along with Jin, Yoshimitsu is the only character that can launch punish Horang's rage art on reaction. Forward one plus two is a mid irreversible chunk of pain that knocks down on hit and breaks floors in combos. It is safe on block and has great pushback that can reset the neutral game if things are getting a bit rough. It is linear though, so be careful of steppers. Forward one plus two can also hit low stances like Zhao Yu's Art of Phoenix and Eddie's Relax. Similar to forward one plus two, Crouch Dash two is a mid with a good vertical and horizontal hitbox. This doesn't knock down on normal hit, but it does launch on counter hit. It also has decent tracking, gives frame advantage in open play and wall splats. Watch out though, as it is punishable on block at minus 14. Crouch Dash 2 also slips under highs at the start of its animation, so can be effective after say a down forward one on block to punish particularly jab happy opponents. Speaking of which, Yoshimitsu doesn't have many ways to close the gap, so 3-4 is a godsend in Yoshimitsu's arsenal. It is a safe, advancing double mid kick, gives frame advantage on hit, and can transition into Manji Dragonfly stance by holding up, 
This gives Yoshimitsu frame advantage even on block. However, due to the sluggish moves from Dragonfly stance, all the options can unfortunately be jab floated. On hit, it does set up some dangerous mix-ups, but unfortunately, it's very hard to hit confirm into a stance transition. Without transitioning into Dragonfly stance, Yoshimitsu is left at around minus six, which more or less ends his turn. But if the opponent tries to press their advantage with a down forward one, they can be launched by flash. Once the opponent is respecting three, four, even on block, then you can start going for Dragonfly mix-ups. We'll cover your options in more detail later in the stances section. Use 3-4 with care though. Since this is Yoshimitsu's best gap closer, the opponent will likely be looking out for it when spacing, and it can be sidewalked to the left, but not to the right. Yoshimitsu's running three is simply a generic slash kick. Since it's a generic tool, it is available in both default and no sword stance. It does decent damage and knocks down on hit. And considering that Yoshimitsu's other gap closes with 3-4, four, forward forward four, and the occasional forward forward three are all negative on block, running three seems too good not to use. The real value of running three though, is that it gives plus nine on block. This is very easy to set up and opens up a lot of possibilities. Running three into down back one one against a cornered opponent to set up a wall combo, for example. However, it can be sidewalked quite easily in either direction. And perfecting instant while running execution so that you can do this at close range will take quite a bit of practice. While standing four and while standing one plus two are also both generic moves. Again, available in default or no sword stance. They're both fairly linear and the range is a bit short, but considering that they're both fast, safe on block and positive on hit mids are good tools to use as part of Yoshimitsu's fully crouched mixer, especially when paired with scary lows, such as the infamous sword sweep and fully crouched down forward four. Fully crouched down forward four and side step one are two counter hit launches that are best used at tip range. The surprising range of both of these moves is enough to make enemies cautious in their approach. So don't be afraid to use them to send out a message. As an added bonus, side step one goes under highs at the start of its animation. Fully crouched down forward four is a high crush for the entirety of the animation, also recovering in crouch. It has excellent tracking, basically making it an unofficial homing move, and is Yoshimitsu's only unseeable low that gives plus frames on hit, so can be used to maintain pressure, considering its range, tracking, high crush properties, and the threat of the counter hit launcher, this can be a very annoying move to deal with. Just don't get too predictable as it's basically death on block. When used at tip range, side step one and fully crouched down forward four can also lead to some devastating setups. For example, side step one or normal hit into crouch dash two or fully crouched down forward four or normal hit into up back one plus two variations. Down forward two is a reliable and safe launcher, though it only launches crouches on counter hit. Compared to a generic down forward two, it has good range and is overall an excellent whiff punisher. It can be stepped to the right though, and sidewalked in both directions. Up forward three is a little bit riskier, but it crushes lows and even some highs since it has a low hitbox at the start of its animation. It also has some surprising phantom range and tracking when done from crouch. Down forward three is a linear mid kick, but because of its decent range, safety on block, and mix up possibilities, this can be an effective mid range tool. Down forward three one is a mid mid natural combo. One practical use for this is in Okizeme situations. If they get up straight and block, down forward three one is safe. On delayed wake ups, the down forward three will whiff, 
but the one extension will hit grounded, and also any get up kick attempts will be knocked down on counter hit, resetting the situation. Yoshimitsu is also considered to be crouching after a single down forward three. This can be a great way to threaten the opponent with lows after you've conditioned them to respect you with down forward three one. Finally, you can charge up the second hit and make it unblockable, with higher damage the longer you charge. But of course, this is very risky to do. A neat little trick you can use to end the round against defensive opponents is to hold the second hit just enough to make it unblockable before letting it rip. Down back 3-3 three, three are spinning low kicks that recover in crouch. Common to all of Yoshimitsu's spin attacks, the down back 3 series can be chained into itself while moving him forward with each spin. This also helps a bit in catching sidestep in both directions. Unlike most multi-hitting low strings, such as King's Ali kicks or Asuka's down back 4 string, you can't block and low parry this. On the sixth spin, Yoshimitsu gets dizzy and falls to the ground, giving your opponent a free launch. You can also do the low kicks as an extension from his back one spinning attack, though you can only do a maximum of two kicks after the transition before getting dizzy, no matter when you do it. All the low kicks are launch punishable on block, and only the first two are a natural combo. To cover this weakness, Yoshimitsu can end the string with a mid kick after two to five kicks by pressing four. The mid kick may look like a while standing four, but it will knock down and wall splat on hit. Unfortunately, it's too slow to be used as a mix up tool. And if the opponent has a good read on when Yoshimitsu will transition into the mid, they can interrupt it with any while standing move that is 13 frames or lower. 14 frame moves will trade. One last thing about his spinning low kicks is that they can transition into Indian meditation stance by inputting down three plus four. This allows for some crazy setups. For example, down back three three, Indian meditation stance one to finish off a blocking low health opponent who has been conditioned to respect you. Going into meditation stance also makes it a bit harder for the opponent to get an optimal punish since most launch punish combos don't work anymore and have to be changed because of the awkward float. And even then, the opponent deals reduced damage because Yoshimitsu is in a floated state. Sword Sweep is Yoshimitsu's most infamous unblockable and his best move from fully crouch as it gives a full combo when it connects. Sword Sweep is best used as a tech trap and in this way is one of the best reset tools in the entire game. Yoshimitsu normally can't launch punish lows until minus 15, but after blocking a low that only gives you a while standing four, you can use Sword Sweep to instead try and score a combo, since most players tend not to press buttons after an unsafe move. Though if the opponent is on the ball, they can just hop kick you or use a fast mid on reaction. Sword Sweep has two subtle variations, the slower but longer range version with fully crouched down forward one requires you to take a step forward before performing the move. The faster but shorter range version is fully crouched down back, back one. This omits the initial crouching step, resulting in a faster startup. With either variation though, Sword Sweep is still slow and has short range so be careful when using it against standing opponents, as they can easily backdash or low crush it. Forward Forward 4 is an advancing knee launcher that recovers in back turn. It is a fantastic long range whiff punisher. While strictly speaking, this is unsafe on block, you have several options to slip out of punishment and potentially even turn the tides and land a launcher as a result. By just holding back, Yoshimitsu is left at minus 12. Tapping down back allows you to evade hides, but opens you up to mid launchers. Characters with 12 frame mids like Jin can cover both options. Probably the best option on block is to spin away with back three or back four. Though it does cost you some health, it avoids most punishment options. 
For example, you can now even launch Punish Jin if he tries to 1 plus 2. Of course, if the opponent tries to chase you down with, say, a dashing move, the spin can be punished. Because Forward Forward 4 comes from a dash, it can automatically realign and is usable from Crouch to catch those trying to backdash away from the Sword Sweep. Another use for this is as a post-screw combo ender to lead into some nice back-turned Okizeme. Up Forward 4, better known as Avoiding the Puddle, now why does that sound so familiar? Is Yoshimitsu's most famous and useful homing move, and with good reason. It is a safe on block mid, low crushes, can be done from crouch so as to complement his fully crouch mix-up, knocks down, and wall splats on hit. Up back four will of course move Yoshimitsu back a little bit, but interestingly, it deals less damage, loses its homing ability at tip range, and also becomes unsafe on block at minus 19, though most characters will be hard pressed to punish this properly. In a game where generic throws can be broken with either one or two, a powerful command throw with a one plus two break is a great move to have. Quarter circle back 1 plus 2 comes out really fast and can be buffered from moves such as 3 4 on hit and back 1 on block. It puts you in a great position for Okizeme and is a combo starter on the Forgotten Realm stage. Note that Yoshimitsu's back throw has similar properties to quarter circle back 1 plus 2. However, Yoshimitsu lands in back turned and as a back throw, this is unbreakable. Let's finish off the top move section with arguably one of Yoshimitsu's most underrated moves. Down forward 1 plus 2, 2. First of all, let's get the bad out the way. It is a slow low, making it quite vulnerable to beefy counter hit mids. However, its animation is rather misleading and unorthodox, making it quite hard to block on reaction. It high crushes and when undelayed is a natural combo which hurts a lot. Though do be careful that it only starts slipping under highs on the 8th frame. So if you do a down forward 1 that leaves you at minus 4 into a down forward 1 plus 2, you'll be beat by any high that is 11 frames or faster. However, any high that is 12 frames or slower will be evaded. This also leaves you at neutral frames on hit which is amazing for a move of this type. The string is also one of the few power lows that isn't launch punishable on block, and is also semi-hit confirmable, which is to say you can't strictly speaking confirm it on hit, but since down forward 1 plus 2 takes a while to come out, you can confirm if the opponent is doing a high during the startup and then just finish the string. But even just the first hit by itself is still a strong option. The first hit is only minus 11 on block, so you should really try to low parry this on reaction. This is easier said than done though, especially in the heat of a match. And due to the delayable mid string ender, which on counter hit results in a ballerina stun in open play and a splat when next to the wall, opponents will be hesitant to punish this. Though do note that at maximum delay, you can still be interrupted by 11 frame while standing moves. Also, the wall splat can be a little finicky. The first hit by itself also recovers in crouching and gives you some nice plus frames to work with on hit and especially on counter hit, leading to some powerful crouching mix-ups. One final important perk to mention about down forward 1 plus 2 is that it catches sidestep left which is generally Yoshimitsu's weak side. However, it will still lose to side walk left. Again, since it's quite slow, don't overdo it with this move, but it is definitely one of Yoshimitsu's best lows. In stark contrast to Yoshimitsu's relatively sane top moves, 
This list includes some of the weirdest looking moves in the game, complete with the most unique of properties. Don't let the term situational fool you though, for while it is true that these moves have limited applications due to their risky properties, Yoshimitsu is great at baiting or conditioning opponents into situations where these moves really shine. Sidestep 4, and by extension, Kincho 4. 16 frame startup, homing, knockdown on normal hit, neutral on block, a full combo on counter hit, can go directly into Kincho, which makes it plus 3 on block, and also meditation stance, which makes it minus 3 on block. These are all amazing properties. So, why isn't sidestep 4 in the top move section? Well, the actual kick is a 16 frame high that comes out of sidestep or king cho. This actually makes it slower than 16 frames, easily over 20 at least, with the sidestep or king cho acting as an additional tell for when the move is coming. As a homing move, up forward 4 easily outclasses sidestep 4. However, it is an excellent frame trap tool. Sidestep 4, Kincho 1 plus 2 will beat any form of retaliation. Sidestep 4 by itself is neutral on block, giving you some strong options against respectful opponents, for example an unblockable. And the trap is even deadlier at the wall, where things like Sidestep 4 into Kincho back 1 plus 2 become very potent. Down 2-2 two two is mainly used as a combo ender, Post screw in the open, it leaves the opponent in a face down, feet towards position, giving some great Okizeme opportunities for Yoshimitsu. It is also used as the only reliable transition into no sword stance, with down 2, 2 2 plus 3 being especially good as a wall carry ender. The two hits are a natural combo and can't be sidestepped, though the string can still be side walked to the left. Also, the second hit by itself is a counter hit launcher, so you may want to occasionally use this in the neutral. Just don't rely on it too much, as it is minus 14 on block. Though there are extensions that can deter an opponent from hastily punishing down 2 2 on block. Down 2 2 1 is a wall carry or break ender. Down 2 2 down 1 is a spike ender. Each succeeding hit of both strings have very generous delay windows, and it is even advisable to delay the hits in some combos. As a final note on this string, down 2-2-1 two, two, does not knock down on normal hit, unlike down 2-2-1. Two, two, As mentioned in top moves, forward 2 is a safe, high back fist that gives huge plus frames on hit and an instant screw combo on counter hit. This wall splats, and can also continue into Yoshimitsu's spinning back fist by inputting down back 2. The move itself is actually rather slow though, making it a bit useless by itself. However, it does shine in two situations. One is as an extension to down forward 1 or while standing 1. It is important to mix this up though, as the back fist can be ducked and launch punished. The other situation is when baiting opponents with meditation stance. Cancelling meditation stance with a forward or back input and then hitting 2 is quite effective against those that try to rush Yoshimitsu. And even if the back fist gets blocked in all these situations, Yoshimitsu can simply go into down back 2 to continue pressure. Speaking of down back 2, Yoshimitsu's spinning back fists can be very annoying to deal with. It is chainable onto itself for up to 5 times, but only the first 3 hits are a natural combo, with Yoshimitsu getting dizzy on the 6th. The back fists themselves are safe mids that give frame advantage on hit, 6 frames for the first spin and 2 frames for the ones after, outside of the 6th spin of course. What makes down back 2 good though, is that it can be used as an extension from a wide variety of moves, some of which even end with Yoshimitsu in back turn, and others which have branching options of their own to mix up with the back fists. 
Another feature is that it moves Yoshimitsu slightly forward with each spin, or alternatively, retreat with a buffered back turned down back too. It also recovers in crouch, allowing for crouching mix-ups. Indian Meditation Stance 2 also performs this move, and from this stance, it has a little bit more range. Also, performing Yoshimitsu's 10-hit string and stopping at the spinning back fist part can be a good way to access crouch. This is Yoshimitsu's second 10-hit string from the command list, and is actually one of the better 10-hit strings in the game. While far from stellar, the possibilities with Down Back 2 and all of its variations are a solid addition to Yoshimitsu's arsenal. Up Forward 2 is similar to Down Forward 3 1, in that it hits grounded and can be cancelled into crouch by holding down. The difference is that Up Forward 2 crushes lows and can become a normal hit launcher with Up Forward 2 into while standing flash. But only when directly in front of the opponent and at point-blank range. On counter hit, it leads to a combo at any range. It is substantially riskier than down forward 3-1 though, as it is launch punishable on block. You can also be floated during the initial jump animation, and even if the opponent doesn't float you, up forward 2 can be sidewalked in both directions. Use this during the opponent's advance, for example, against a dash or advancing attack that is just a tiny bit out of range, or alternatively on wake up. This way, the chances of landing it on counter hit or being in range for the guaranteed flash follow up greatly improve. 2 1 rarely sees use because of its bad risk to reward ratio, and it is even harder to get results out of down back 1 1. However, because of their misleading animations, they can confuse opponents. They look like two hits, even when cancelled, and the first hits of both strings, when used on their own, have some rewarding, albeit risky, applications. 2-1 back cancels the second hit of the string. If the initial two hits, you have many options depending on the matchup and how you've conditioned the opponent. 2-1 back into quarter circle back 1 plus 2 for a throw, for example. 2-3 at the wall for a counter hit wall combo. Flash for a combo in the open, or into up forward 3 to crush jabs and launch. 2-1 back can even be used as an okizeme tool. For example, launch, screw, dash, down forward 1, 2-1 back, instant fully crouch, down forward 1 for a reset. Down back 1's slow startup means it is best used when at a heavy frame advantage, for example, after a running 3 on block, especially at the wall with down back 1 1 leading to a high damage natural combo wall splat. Down back 1 is neutral on hit and leaves the opponent crouching. Be very careful with using these moves, however since both 2-1 back and down back 1 are launch punishable on block. The only thing preventing you from getting launched are the second hits of both strings, which are both safe. So use both moves only when you have a hard read and only out of a setup. Back 1 is yet another spinning attack. This is pretty slow to come out and is high, but advances Yoshimitsu forward a little. As usual, it can be done up to five times before Yoshimitsu gets dizzy on the sixth spin. And similar to down back two, only the first three hits are a natural combo. There are merits to using back one though, since it has extensions in down back three and back three or back four, all of which can be done after any of the back ones. Back one also gives frame advantage on block, plus one for the first hit, and plus four for the rest, and when at the right angle, it can even guarantee a flash on counter hit. Also, back 1-1, one, one, down back 3-3 three, three is all natural, and leads into his down back 3 setups. With the introduction of the Power Crush and Rage Art systems, Yoshi's back 1 series into a block, duck, back 3 or back 4, can be used as a fancy max damage counterattack against certain power crushes or rage arts. 
especially against people that tend to bait you into rage arts for a comeback win, though it is very impractical to do so. Credits to Inca for this tech. There is a series of videos on his YouTube channel discussing the application of this against multiple characters. As always, the link can be found in the description. Forward Forward 3 is a safe advancing mid kick that gives you frame advantage on hit and can transition into King Cho stance by pressing 1 plus 2. Though it is pretty slow and weak to sidestep left, against a cornered opponent, this is a decent advancing tool since its Keen Cho extensions shine the most when at the wall. On counter hit, forward forward 3 stuns for a damaging combo. Crouch Dash 1 is another long range whiff punisher like forward forward 4, though it's slower and much more punishable than forward forward 4, since you don't have any back turn shenanigans. On the plus side, it gives a much more damaging combo on hit and is difficult to punish when blocked at tip range. Crouch Dash 1 can also transition into Keen Cho by pressing 1 plus 2. This makes it possible to bait opponents who are too eager to punish Crouch Dash 1. For example, if Crouch Dash 1 gets shallow blocked, you can do Keen Cho Forward 2 for a counter hit launch. Up back 1 plus 2 is Yoshimitsu's unblockable mid sword stab. It has a lot of range, but is linear and very slow. Even on hit, the opponent can get a free wake up 4 during your recovery if you are close enough. Outside of wake up 4 range, your Okizeme options pretty much just reset back into neutral. There isn't really much use for up back 1 plus 2 unless you really catch the opponent sleeping. However, it can be cancelled into more useful moves. Up back 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 is a high unblockable counter hit launcher for those who try to interrupt you when they see the unblockable, and also gives frame advantage or normal hit. For the steppers, you have up back 1 plus 2, 1, a wide mid unblockable that creates an impassable hitbox in front of Yoshimitsu. You'd be surprised at just how often people run into the wheel of death even at the highest level of play. The duration of the spin can be shortened by tapping back. The spinning sword itself is often used as a tech trap, an alternative for when you can't crouch in time to access the sword sweep. A good trick at the wall, just outside of the opponent's range, is to do up back 1 plus 2, forcing the opponent to try and step or interrupt the stab. That's when you cancel it into the 1 or 1 plus 2 and if the opponent doesn't move, then the uncancelled stab will still reach them for huge damage. Also note that the stab coming from Yoshimitsu's 4-4-2-2-1 string can also be cancelled into the spinning sword, though it cannot be cancelled into the high count hit launcher. Up forward 1 plus 2, the aptly named Death Copter, is an unblockable mid and another one of Yoshimitsu's Okizeme tools, since it hits grounded. It deals more damage the longer you stay in the air, and leads to a juggle on max duration flight, if you can get it to connect that is. You can also cross up the opponent with up forward 1 plus 2 back, and this can even transition into dragonfly by hitting 1 plus 2 at any point. The fastest and most used version of Death Copter is up forward 1 plus 2 down, which is often used after a screw attack in combos. It should be obvious, but because the opponent can recover while Yoshimitsu is in the air, this can be anticipated and evaded, but not punished. Yoshimitsu also uses Death Copter in his part time work as an Uber driver and apparently it's working out so well for him that he literally has money to throw around. Down 1 is a downward slash that can also be performed from down forward 3 1 or up forward 3 plus 4, back 1 4 down 1 strings. Down 1's primary use is as an Okizeme tool, usually emitting a post screw spike combo ender in favor of a charged, unblockable version of down 1. An uncharged down 1 is safe on block and neutral on hit 
but because Yoshimitsu slashes downwards where he stands, it doesn't have the extended range of the unblockable versions. When charged, Yoshimitsu will move forward one step at a time, increasing the slash damage with each step. Charging down one into a single step is enough to make it unblockable. Past three steps, the slash knocks down on hit. At four steps, the damage is already at a point where it is close to that of a full combo from one of Yoshimitsu's standard launchers. It can also be cancelled at any time by pressing back. You can also charge the slash up indefinitely, to a point where it can kill in one slash, but you're never going to land this in a real match. If your opponent actually lets Yoshimitsu get away with that, then they really deserve to get hit anyway. You win. Similar to up forward 1 plus 2 and down 1, quarter circle forward 1 is another unblockable that hits grounded. The only difference is that quarter circle forward 1 cannot be charged up. Up forward 3 plus 4 is one of Yoshimitsu's goofiest looking moves, with even goofier looking extensions. It's very slow, can be floated easily, and is punishable on block, but the amount of options you have make this move worthy of consideration. Up forward 3 plus 4 back 1 is useful for setting up frame traps like up forward 3 plus 4 back 1 to a buffered quarter circle back 1 plus 2, though the back 1 part can be ducked. When the back 1 hits, Yoshimitsu automatically takes a leap backwards. The string can also be extended. Up forward 3 plus 4 back 1 4 down 1 has Yoshimitsu doing a backwards flip on the third hit, and the fourth hit is Yoshimitsu's down 1, which can also be charged off of this string. The first three hits of this string work well as a wall combo with an optional, chargeable down 1 extension afterwards. Also, the backflip has similar properties to Meditation Stance 3, which we'll look at in more detail later, making it possible to intentionally cross up with the up forward 3 plus 4, and then hit with the backflip as they try to retaliate. Up for 3 plus 4, back 1, 3 plus 4 ends in an overhead kick, similar to up for 3 plus 4 itself. The last hit by itself gives frame advantage and puts the opponent in crouch on block. Up for 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4 is a high crushing Roo kick that even goes under many mids, perfect for those that try to jab interrupt after up for 3 plus 4. Up forward 3 plus 4, up 3 plus 4, ends in a safe, low crushing launcher. If you press 1 plus 2 afterwards, you can go into Dragonfly Stance, with down 1 plus 2, Flea Stance, and down 3 plus 4, Indian Stance. Note that in the case of up forward 3 plus 4, 1 plus 2, the first hit is cancelled into the stance transition. Also note that if up forward 3 plus 4 connects on a standing opponent, Yoshimitsu can pick up by going into flea stance and floating with flea 1 plus 2. Up 3 plus 4 is a launching mid with low crushing properties. It also gives frame advantage on block on top of forcing the opponent into crouch. However, it has an extremely slow startup, meaning it can be delay hop kicked into a float. You can also use a short sidewalk to evade it, but just backdashing away is the simplest and generally the best option. So some setup is required to actually land this, for example after a combo into an Okizeme Ender. Up forward 1 is a low crushing downward slash that is safe on block, gives plus frames on hit, and a face down, feet away knockdown on counter hit. This move also spikes opponents mid combo, so it can be used as a setup tool. However, it is pretty linear, slow, and susceptible to being floated. Forward forward 2 and then on hit 2, do note that you can just mash the second 2 to get it out. This is best used as a side switching attack that knocks the opponent down and then puts them into a back turned mix up situation. This is most useful when you find your back against the wall and want to turn the tables on the opponent. For example, after landing a flash, do a short combo and then finish with forward forward 2-2 two, two, 
to apply a back-turned mix-up on the opponent while they're next to the wall. Against Jack and Gigas specifically, a screw into forward forward 2-2, two, two, back turned down 1, is the max damage combo ender. Outside of these situations though, it's only really a gimmick move at best. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is a blockable version of Yoshimitsu's up back 1 plus 2 1. The startup is noticeably shorter too. It can be used as a keep out move with a wide hitbox and guarantees follow ups on counter hits. In the open, you get a back 2 2 or a rage drive and at the wall, you get a wall splat with crouch dash too. But this can be inconsistent at certain angles. So for better consistency, go with forward three. A weird but rare interaction is if one plus two plus three hits late into the animation. For example, if the opponent moves into it with an advancing string, the opponent will get counter hit and Yoshimitsu will get a lot of frame advantage enough to guarantee a crouch dash 1. Also note that 1 plus 2 plus 3 absorbs Akuma's normal fireballs, which is pretty neat. Forward 3 plus 4 is Yoshimitsu's power crush, and this will transition into flea on hit. This is also available in no sword stance, only minus the flea transition post hit. Use with caution though, as it is steppable when anticipated and some characters can even launch punish it on block. By pressing back, you can also cancel it into a retreating move, which recovers in back turn. Note that this still has armor. A cool little bonus with this move is that it can break floors on hit, but only in default stance. While standing two and its no sword stance counterpart allow for some easy back turn transitions into mix ups. You can whiff it from afar and bait the enemy, or do it up close into something like back turned down one. Do note that nothing is guaranteed though, so you might want to just test the waters with generic back turned down fours, or simply a retreating crouch guard. Most opponents, however, will be anticipating the dragonfly transition from while standing 2 1 for a free combo. No sword stance while standing 2 also has extensions in the form of while standing 2 1 2, with all hits recovering in back turn, and while standing 2 1 3, with the last hit here going back to front facing status. And finally, to round up Yoshimitsu's situational moves, we have forward forward 1 plus 2 and forward forward 1 plus 4. Both of these moves are advancing transitions into back turned. Forward forward 1 plus 2 is a cartwheel that leaves the opponent at minus 3 and in crouch on hit. It is also a decent combo ender for Okizeme, as it spikes the opponent. Though it is plus frames on hit with the opponent forced to crouch, be careful about using this move in neutral, as Yoshimitsu is left in back turned at negative frames on block, and is still fairly linear. Forward forward 1 plus 4 is a back turn transition that faints into a harakiri. The harakiri itself can be done with forward forward 1 plus 4 forward, although any directional button will do. Yoshimitsu takes no damage from the stab if it deals lethal damage to your opponent. Perfect for a flashy, if incredibly risky comeback. Doing forward forward 1 plus 4 forward forward will do a double unblockable harakiri with the second hit capable of killing in one hit. But on the flip side, it will also kill Yoshimitsu on whiff. You can catch opponents off guard with this, but it certainly isn't something that can be abused. <laughs> Yoshimitsu's back 1 plus 2 is just your standard rage art. A mid with decent damage, has armor, but is death on block. This is, however, one of the coolest rage arts. Yoshimitsu is one of the few characters to have two rage arts. Up back 1 plus 4 turns Yoshimitsu into a giant hitbox that launches on hit. 
note that you pretty much need to have the enemy hitbox on top of your own, which means it will never hit unless the enemy attacks, no matter how close you are to them. Think of it as a slower flash that launches even airborne opponents. Also, Yoshimitsu takes 75% less damage from any absorbed attacks during the Rage Art's active frames. This is quite a boost compared to the universal 25% damage reduction of a regular Rage Art. Also, when successfully triggered against an airborne opponent, for example, if timed with an enemy's running 3, the damage scaling of each hit in the resulting combo is fixed at 70% until the opponent touches a wall or the floor, in which case it goes back to regular scaling. This means that if fully optimized, Yoshimitsu can get a higher damage combo against running threes or slide attacks than you would normally get, while also taking less damage. This means you can potentially come back from an otherwise guaranteed loss than with any other rage art. You win. <laughs> Crouch Dash 1 plus 2 is a safer, more damaging version of Crouch Dash 2 that launches on normal hit and still allows the use of a screw afterwards. It is guaranteed after a counter hit 1 plus 2 plus 3. You can use Crouch Dash 1 plus 2 to extend combos, though use it as early as possible to prevent loss of damage. It is also usable in no sword stance. Outside of flash range, this is Yoshimitsu's fastest natural hitting launcher, but it does require Yoshimitsu to be low on health, of course. The applications of Yoshimitsu's stances aren't as clear-cut compared to other stance-heavy characters like Zaoyu, Feng, or Eddie. Stance dancing can be effective at forcing a reaction from opponents, so spacing and mental frame advantage is key. Most of the stances can cancel into one another, and using these transitions effectively is a core aspect of Yoshimitsu's gameplay. While many of Yoshimitsu's stance moves are worthy of being listed as top moves, their applications are limited due to being locked behind a stance. This can make their usage quite telegraphed. Yoshimitsu will have to keep his transitions unpredictable in order to avoid being punished at higher levels of play. Yoshimitsu can enter meditation stance via 3 plus 4, back turn 3 plus 4, sidestep 4, 3 plus 4, kincho 4, 3 plus 4. Meditation is a very defensive stance that heals Yoshimitsu over time, but exposes his back, and is best used outside poke range to recover a bit of health while the opponent is recovering or hesitating. Meditation is a good way to force overly defensive opponents into rushing in, as no one is going to just let Yoshimitsu recover his health. So be prepared to fight off a charging opponent. Meditation 3 is Yoshimitsu's only real attack from the stance. As mentioned, since meditation turns Yoshimitsu around, Meditation 3 will almost always be an advancing backflip that launches on hit, so follow up with a back turned 2 for a screw. On block, Yoshimitsu is at frame advantage, plus 12 when shallow blocked, meaning that back turned down 1 and back turned hop kick are both uninterruptible for a solid mix up. In the rare occasion that it connects from the front, it will knock the opponent down and Yoshimitsu is left at minus 14 on block, though it's impossible to punish due to pushback. Against very defensive opponents who try to maintain a slight life lead and win via timeout, Meditation 1 plus 2 is a neat little trick to get a small chunk of health back 
and steal the round from right under their noses. It is also a mid-unblockable launcher, but the non-existent range and slow startup make that aspect of the move unusable. Yoshimitsu doesn't have many useful attacks from meditation itself, so learning how to do back turn moves from meditation is very important. We'll look at this later in the section. Meditation back, down back, back back creates a lot of distance and can hide some nasty setups for when the enemy decides to rush in and stop your healing. For example, meditation back, down back while standing 2-1 to crush an aggressive opponent's jab and launch them. If the opponent stops in their tracks when meditation is cancelled, Yoshimitsu can just go back into meditation and repeat the cycle. This tactic of healing and baiting is especially strong on infinite stages. In the right situations, meditation can also be used up close. For example, sidestep 4, 3 plus 4 into back turned down 1 against a hesitating opponent, though it is very risky to try this. Also note that once Yoshimitsu enters rage, he will stay in rage, no matter how much you heal. This means, hypothetically, he could be in rage while at full health. But if this actually happens in a real match, your opponent is probably either passed out, died, or gone off to make a sandwich. Yoshimitsu can enter Indian meditation stance by pressing down 3 plus 4 from his default stance, dragonfly, flee, the down back 3 string, forward 3 3, up forward 3 plus 4, down 3 plus 4, forward forward 2 2 but only on hit, while grounded face up feet towards, after crashing into a wall with default stance forward 3 plus 4, and no sword stance, but instead here, you'll need to press up 1 plus 2. Similar to meditation, Indian meditation is a healing stance that should almost always be used from a distance. While less mobile than meditation, Yoshimitsu has access to more attacks from Indian meditation, can crush highs when timed correctly, and is difficult to launch punish. If Yoshimitsu inputs any command aside from a stance transition or a cancel, he'll start spinning for a while before the actual command comes out. This makes every move from Indian meditation stance quite telegraphed, meaning that as a defensive mix-up stance, it's not as effective as the standard meditation stance. Indian meditation back or forward is a teleport, and depending on the distance, can either end with Yoshimitsu behind the opponent or in front of them and in back turned. The teleport always ends with Yoshimitsu facing in the opposite direction from the one he was facing in before. Up close, if done from back turned Indian meditation, Yoshimitsu will always teleport away from the opponent. From further out, Yoshimitsu will just reappear in place. Indian meditation 1 is a low crushing mid unblockable. It is very slow and weak to short sidewalks but useful against blocking opponents, especially when they're low on health. Note that unlike quarter circle forward 1, which can give one positive frame on hit, Indian Meditation 1 is always neutral. Indian Meditation 2 is simply Yoshimitsu's down back 2, and has the exact same extensions. However, unlike a regular down back 2, the first hit has the same frame data as the subsequent hits and you can only do it four times as opposed to five before getting dizzy. If used from back turned Indian Meditation, you can also use it to run away from the opponent. Indian Meditation 3 is linear and very unsafe on block, but has long range and can continue into a second hit with Indian 3, 3 plus 4. This is uninterruptible on block since it has such a low hitbox. By itself, this is a class one launcher and much safer on block than the first hit, but still punishable at minus 13. Indian Meditation 4 is basically Yoshimitsu's fully crouched down forward 4, just with the added spin from the stance. It retains its count hit launching property, and is still launch punishable on block. Pressing up from Indian Meditation goes into default stance, 1 plus 2 goes into flee, and up 1 plus 2 goes into dragonfly. Other options from Indian Meditation include holding down 3 plus 4, 
which allows Yoshimitsu to float forwards, backwards, and even sideways, but stops healing him. An extreme example of what Yoshimitsu is capable of with Indian meditation is crushing a jab while entering the stance, floating backwards a bit, causing the opponent's low to whiff, and then going for a counter at Indian Meditation 4 when they chase. Now, you probably won't ever pull off such an elaborate sequence in a real match, but it shows what Yoshimitsu can do when you get creative. Another way to use Indian Meditation is after a setup into No Sword Stance, up 1 plus 2, or down back 3, down 3 plus 4 for a mix up. One more thing to note is that while in No Sword Stance, 4 3 plus 4 transitions into Indian Meditation much faster on hit than on block. Yoshimitsu can enter Kincho Stance by pressing 1 plus 2. This also works in Crouch, but only from his default stance. He can also enter Kincho by pressing 1 plus 2 after the following moves. 2 2, back 2, back 2 1, Crouch Dash 1, Forward Forward 3, Sidestep 4, and Kincho 4. Kincho is Yoshimitsu's straightforward, offensive stance, and so is most effective when you enter it with frame advantage, for example, after 2 2 or forward forward 3 on hit. However, certain moves are best used from a manual entry when spacing. Kincho 1 plus 2 is a fast, damaging mid that recovers in back turned and knocks the opponent down guaranteeing a back turned down one for a chunky 48 points of damage. It comes out in just 12 frames, so after a 2-2 on hit, it will interrupt any move that the opponent might try. When it comes to catching sidestep, this is quite inconsistent. Occasionally, the opponent will only get snagged by the first two hits, while the last one will awkwardly whiff, leaving Yoshimitsu wide open. On block, although it's safe on paper, Due to the forced back turned, you are susceptible to 12 frame punishes, even if you hold back. However, with the right read, you can escape punishment, and possibly even punish the punisher. The mind games at play here are the exact same as forward forward 4 on block, so check the top move section for your options. Kincho forward 2 is a fast, high, counter hit launcher which can even go under highs with small hitboxes at certain frames. Beware though, as it is punishable on block, and can be sidestepped to the right, despite the circular looking animation. Due to being high and unsafe on block, it's generally recommended to avoid using this directly from a move transition. Instead, use it from a quick manual transition while spacing. Perhaps the best thing about Kincho Forward 2 though, is its absurd phantom range. At max range, it is basically impossible to punish on block, outside of the wall of course, and if the opponent rushes in after, you can bait them into a keep out move. Kincho 2 is a slow mid launcher, that is again weak to sidestep right. On block it's minus 14, but certain characters may have trouble punishing it due to pushback, especially from tip range. Speaking of which, its range is also quite lacking. Overall, not recommended. Kincho 3 is a super linear low that knocks down into a guaranteed fully crouched down forward 4 or normal hit. It is heavily punishable on block, but if it's blocked at tip range, it becomes safer at the cost of becoming more reactable. Kincho back 1 plus 2 is a mid unblockable with a backswing. This is easily steppable, so use with caution. Kincho 4 is the same move as sidestep 4. Use at the wall against opponents who try to sidestep Kincho back 1 plus 2. It can be looped into itself by repeating Kincho 4 1 plus 2, or go into meditation stance with Kincho 4 3 plus 4. Kincho up 1 plus 2 goes into dragonfly stance. The startup animation is exactly like Kincho 3, so can disorientate the opponent, hopefully causing them to freeze up and giving you a quick dragonfly mix up. This is occasionally used to go into dragonfly okizeme after a combo, though this is very weak to side rolls and fast get ups. Kincho 1-1 has short range, is slow, and is also very linear. 
but it's Yoshimitsu's only safe mid Kincho option at minus nine, which makes it a pretty decent tool to set up for flash traps. On hit, it leaves Yoshimitsu at plus four and forces the opponent into crouch. Kincho forward moves Yoshimitsu forward quickly because sometimes you just gotta go fast. As an added bonus, this will slip under highs with each step. This move is usually used to adjust distance post combo. Another amusing application though, is when trying to win via timeout, where it can be used to quite literally run away. Kincho also has a small reversal window in its initial frames. When triggered, the reversal knocks down on hit and gives frame advantage on block. The actual attack that comes out of the reversal is a bit slow, so even if you manage to trigger it, the teleporting axe kick isn't always guaranteed, and in certain situations, we'll even end up whiffing completely. This reversal is similar to Flash in that it's fast and can also punish safe moves. The difference is that while Flash is range and angle dependent, the Keen Chaw reversal is all about speed and timing. A good example of when to use it is against Horang's Rage Drive. The third hit of this string is normally uninterruptible, even by Flash, but the Keen Chaw reversal will not only get Yoshimitsu out of the forced mix-up, but also gives him the initiative. With the addition of Geese Howard to the game, Yoshimitsu can shut down a lot of his max mode pressure from forward one or forward three cancels, thanks to the Keen Chaw reversal. Yoshimitsu can enter Flea Stance via Down 1 plus 2, Indian Meditation 1 plus 2, Dragonfly 1 plus 2, Up 4 3 plus 4, Down 1 plus 2, and automatically after 4 3 plus 4 on hit while in his default stance. Flea is a mix up based stance that sees Yoshimitsu perch on top of his swords, which have an active hitbox and no hurt box. This means that not only can Flea crush lows, it can also damage opponents when they attempt lows. Only from certain angles though, since the hitbox can be a bit weird, so limbs sometimes just pass through. Though the stance is vulnerable to getting floated, back turned flea has a ginormous hitbox and will often actually hit opponents who try to float Yoshimitsu. Flea up back, up or up forward We'll see Yoshimitsu jump around on his sword like a pogo stick, with the sword retaining its unblockable vertical hitbox. Flea forward forward makes Yoshimitsu dash forward while still perching on top of his two swords. The swords hit grounded, and the dash itself automatically happens after default stance 4 3 plus 4 on hit. It can crash into the wall, stunning Yoshimitsu in the process, but he can input down three plus four during the stun to fall into Indian meditation, allowing him to recover more quickly. This move also breaks floors. Flea down temporarily lowers Yoshimitsu's own hurt box, going under highs and even some mids. Yoshimitsu can also start flea moves without having to wait for the animation to end, allowing him to obscure the startup of certain moves and confuse the opponent. For example, the initial animation of Flea 1 plus 2 and 2 look identical when done immediately after Flea down. Flea 1 is a rolling transition into Crouch. Flea 2 is a low that recovers grounded. At close range, this allows you to switch sides and get a guaranteed wake up 3. From a little further out, Flea 2 is a launcher, allowing you to follow up with up while standing 4, Crouch dash 2 for the screw. Flea 1 plus 2 is a safe natural launcher, but unfortunately is quite slow and duckable. Its tracking and range can also be a bit inconsistent, especially against certain characters like Master Raven, whose neutral stance has her tilting her head back. Add to that the vulnerable nature of Flea itself, means that Flea 1 plus 2 should only be used if you have a hard read on a hesitating opponent. It can, however, be used to pick up opponents hit by up forward three plus four for a full combo. Up forward three plus four, down one plus two is a common Okizeme tool. And if it hits the opponent getting up, Flea Stance itself will float for a Flea one plus two confirm. 
Flea 3 Plus 4 is a class 1 launcher, taking the form of a kangaroo kick, and it shares a similar animation to Flea 1. Again, a good addition to the Flea mind games. Flea Up 3 Plus 4 is a unique move that sends Yoshimitsu into the air, landing on his back and allowing for a spring kick setup. Flea 3 or 4 has Yoshimitsu do evasive spins while perching on top of the sword, similar to his back 3 or back 4. Of course, 3 spins to the left and 4 spins to the right, but this time the spins don't consume health and there's no limit to the number of spins Yoshimitsu can do since he can't get dizzy anymore. Flea Down Back goes into default stance, Flea Down 3 plus 4 goes into Indian Meditation, and Flea Up 1 plus 2 goes into Dragonfly. Yoshimitsu can also move forwards and backwards during Flea by pressing, you guessed it, forward or back. This is called Walking Flea, abbreviated as WFL, and it gives Yoshimitsu access to new kicks, only available while moving. Walking Flea 3 is a mid that transitions into a throw on hit. It deals big damage and breaks the floor on Forgotten Realm, but it is heavily punishable on block. Yoshimitsu will stay in Flea when this whiffs. Walking Flea 4 is a long range low that recovers grounded. As mentioned previously with Flea Up 3 plus 4, Walking Flea 4 can be a reliable way of setting up Yoshimitsu's spring kick. Yoshimitsu can enter Dragonfly stance by pressing up 1 plus 2 from his default stance, Keen Cho, Flea, or Indian Meditation. He can also enter it by pressing up after 3 4, 1 plus 2 after up 4 3 plus 4 or Death Copter, and automatically goes into Dragonfly after while standing 2 1. Dragonfly shares many similar properties with Flea in how it crushes lows, is vulnerable to floats, and has great mix-up potential. The Dragonfly arsenal includes a safe natural launcher that gives plus frames on block, three counter-hit launchers, one of which is a homing move, an unblockable sword attack, and finally an unbreakable throw. Overall, this makes it even more threatening than Flea as an offensive mix-up stance. Dragonfly 3 plus 4 is an unbreakable throw that breaks the floor on Forgotten Realm and can also be used on airborne opponents. Since it's unbreakable, this can be used at the very tip of a standard character's jab range to try and break the opponent's defense, though this does require some serious conditioning on Yoshimitsu's part. Dragonfly 1 is an unblockable mid that hits grounded and is perfect for finishing off the opponent, especially if you've conditioned them to freeze. Watch out though, as it is vulnerable to sidestep right. Dragonfly 2 is a high launcher that stays in Dragonfly and gives frame advantage on block, but unfortunately not enough to prevent a subsequent one being floated by a jam. Dragonfly 3 is a chipping low that launches on counter hit. On normal hit, it forces crouch and is plus six, so can be a good way to start pressure. On block, it's launch punishable by only a handful of characters, but has pretty poor tracking. Dragonfly 4 and Dragonfly Forward 2 are both counter hit launchers, but with a number of key differences. The former will end the stance and the latter stays in Dragonfly, making it harder to follow up on the counter hit launch while in open play. Dragonfly 4 is also a safe mid, being commonly used to quickly get out of Dragonfly and return to standing, or as a screw attack in combos, though do watch out, as it is weak to sidestep right. On hit, it puts opponents into Ballerina Spin for a massive plus 13, but they can still block, so nothing is guaranteed. Meanwhile, Dragonfly Forward 2 knocks down on normal hit, is a homing move, and is better as a pressure tool since it gives frame advantage on block, though do keep in mind that it is a high, leaving Yoshimitsu vulnerable to being floated when ducked. Both moves are especially good against a cornered opponent since they both wall splat. Dragonfly down goes into default stance. Dragonfly 1 plus 2 goes into flee. For better consistency, do this as down 1 plus 2 and Dragonfly Down 3 plus 4 goes into Indian Meditation. It should be noted that the manual transition into Dragonfly is rather fast, 
and is part of the reason why it's possible to pull off stuff like Run Up Dragonfly 1 or Dragonfly 3 plus 4, even against high level opponents, though it certainly isn't something that can be abused. Yoshimitsu can enter Bad Stomach Stance via Down Back 1 plus 2. He can hold Down Back to stay in Bad Stomach indefinitely. Bad Stomach is a defensive stance that not only renders Yoshimitsu unable to block, but also makes him immobile. Interestingly, he's considered to be crouching during the stance, so moves like a generic down forward 2 won't launch him. It's best used as an Okizeme tool and to keep the opponent out, being especially effective on infinite stages, where Bad Stomach 3 or 4 can be done repeatedly without fear of backing into a corner. Bad Stomach 1 or 2 is an unblockable high launcher that lingers for a while, giving Yoshimitsu a few frames of free movement. Since Bad Stomach takes some time to set up, it's perhaps best used as an Okizeme tool to surprise overly aggressive opponents. Bad Stomach 3 or 4 is a retreating backflip that puts a large distance between Yoshimitsu and the opponent. From point blank range, it can also hit mid, and even if it is minus 15 on block, it's impossible to punish due to the space created by the backflip. Just don't use it near the wall, of course. It is one of Yoshimitsu's best positioning tools, and is especially good on infinite stages. Back turned Bad Stomach 3 can be used as an advancing attack, kind of like a longer ranged Meditation 3, though it's less rewarding and overall probably not worth the effort. Yoshimitsu can enter No Sword Stance via 2 plus 3 or down to 2 2 plus 3. The latter is best used to finish combos. Just as the name suggests, No Sword Stance will see Yoshimitsu sheath his main sword, the one held in his left hand, which is also incidentally called Yoshimitsu. This changes the properties of some moves while completely losing others. No Sword Stance then becomes Yoshimitsu's default stance for as long as his swords remain undrawn. For example, exiting other stances like Kincho will not return Yoshimitsu to his standard One Sword Stance. By entering No Sword Stance, Yoshimitsu is giving up his stronger Wallless Combo Enders, Unblockables, and two of his offensive mix-up stances, namely Flea and Dragonfly. In return, Yoshimitsu becomes somewhat more of a normal character. In particular, he finally gets access to a generic low jab from standing. This and some of his other additions in No Sword Stance may not be particularly exciting, but are some sorely needed, robust, solid tools for when Yoshimitsu is in the neutral or on the defensive. In particular, characters like Steve and Kazumi, who are often on the offensive, might be better dealt with in No Sword Stance. Also, when opponents become familiar with Yoshimitsu's stances and unblockables from his default stance, switching to No Sword Stance can often offset this disadvantage, giving Yoshimitsu new animations, frames, and setups to take into consideration, which they'll likely be less familiar with. While in No Sword Stance, Yoshimitsu gains the following moves. First of all, with much jubilation, a generic low jab with down back one. It's kind of funny that Yoshimitsu needs to go through some elaborate stance transition just to access this, but there you go. While Flash is a very powerful and unique panic move, sometimes you just want the simplicity and reliability of a no-nonsense down jab. Down jab is also a good way to enter Yoshimitsu's No Sword Stance Fully Crouch mix-ups, which are quite threatening thanks to Fully Crouch Down Forward 3. We'll take a look at this soon. Yoshimitsu also gains No Sword Stance while standing 2-1-2 or while standing 2-1-3. This is simply while standing 2 into his back turned 1-2 or back turned 1-3. Nothing really to write home about here. Fully Crouch Down Forward 3 is a classic Yoshimitsu move that has changed hands a few times, but is now back in Yoshimitsu's arsenal. This is a scary low from Crouch that has good range and leads to a full combo on normal hit. Use while standing 4 to Crouch Dash 2 to go into a screw afterwards. Do be careful though, as it is death on block. This can be stepped to the right quite easily, 
but to the left it does have some tracking. Though, do bear in mind that if Yoshimitsu is at plus frames, for example after a down jab on hit, you won't be able to step it in either direction. No Sword Stance Fully Crouch 1 plus 2 is simply a flash done directly from a crouch. No Sword Stance Keen Chaw 1 is a safe knockdown mid that imposes crouch on block and knocks down on hit. No Sword Stance Fully Crouch Down Forward 1 2 is a two hit natural combo sweep. Similar to the default sword sweep, you have to do a crouching step forward before you can do this move. Or alternatively, with down back back to make it come out one frame faster, albeit with slightly shorter range. Unlike the regular sword sweep, this can be blocked and carries all of that move's weaknesses. So again, is best used as a tech trap. However, now being a string based move, it comes with some interesting mind games. Doing the first hit by itself is more rewarding as it can net you a launcher, but at minus 16 on block it is substantially more risky, as it can be launch punished by many characters. Opponents may be hesitant to punish though, due to the string extension. On hit or counter hit, this gives you a whopping plus 14, leading to a free down forward 1-4 for some nice damage. And if you're in rage, you can even go into a rage drive for a full launcher. At minus 14 on block and with a little bit of pushback, this is only launch punishable by a handful of characters. No Sword Stance Up Forward 1 Plus 2 is a weird jumping move that recovers in crouch. This can be useful to set up crouching mix-ups, though it is very vulnerable to being floated by fast attacks. Yoshimitsu loses the following moves while in no sword stance. 1-1, one, 2-1, one, one, forward 1 plus 2, the held unblockable version of down 1, down 2-2-1, two, two, down 2-2-1, two, two, down, one, down back 1-1, one, one, while standing 2-1, which is to say the launcher into dragonfly, fully crouched down forward 1, i.e. the sword sweep, Harakiri and all its extensions, entering Kincho from Crouch with 1 plus 2, Kincho 1 1, Kincho 2 1 plus 2, Kincho back 1 plus 2, opponent grounded up 1, Dragonfly, Flea, and Deathcopter. And lastly, the properties of the following moves are changed while in no sword stance. Most moves involving Yoshimitsu's main sword now have significantly shorter range, to name a few, down 1, up forward 1, and crouch dash 1. As an extension of the previous point, most of Yoshimitsu's sword moves also no longer hit grounded, for example, down 1, down forward 3 1, and back turns down 1. No sword stance flash is now 2 frames slower, but has an extended hitbox. No Sword Stance 1 2 1 is now a 10 frame natural combo string. This is unsafe on block, so try to hit confirm into this from 1 2. Unfortunately, it's negative even on hit and doesn't even do that much damage. So, um, pretty eh overall. No Sword Stance 2 1 is now a damaging 10 frame natural comboing string that knocks down and wall splats. This is safe on block. Beware that the second hit can be ducked and launched if you're being very predictable. This is easier said than done though. On hit, Yoshimitsu will let out a very satisfying laugh. As if he knows how powerful this move is. This is best used as a top tier 10 frame punisher. Do bear in mind though, that being an obscure move, on an obscure character, obscured even further by an obscure stance transition, that even at a fairly decent level of play, your opponent may not know that they can duck this. If you notice they aren't ducking, then you can be a bit more liberal with this incredibly powerful jab string. No Sword Stance Forward 1 plus 2 is now a high crushing shoulder that recovers in crouch. It gives plus frames on hit, knocks down, and wall splats on counter hit. Although it is minus 13 on block, many opponents won't know that it recovers in crouch. 
meaning that they'll try to punish with jabs. This can make it a very effective flash trap. All versions of Yoshimitsu's Harakiri have him fake the stab and just disappear in place, not really that useful. No Sword Stance Up 1 plus 2 is now a jumping sit attack that ends in Indian Meditation. It is positive and imposes crouch on both hit and block. To get specific, this is plus 4 on block and a massive plus 20 on hit. But unfortunately, nothing is guaranteed due to the Indian Meditation spin before all the moves. No Sword Stance 4 3 plus 4 no longer automatically transitions into Flea on hit. No Sword Stance Back 2 2 no longer knocks down on hit. No Sword Stance Quarter Circle Forward 1, Sword Sweep, and Indian Meditation 1 are now all blockable. Perhaps the biggest limitation of No Sword Stance is that every round always starts with Yoshimitsu holding his sword regardless of what stance Yoshimitsu ended in with the previous round. Flash and both of Yoshimitsu's Rage Arts, as well as any sword type item moves, also automatically revert Yoshimitsu back to one sword stance. Yoshimitsu can of course manually go back into one sword stance with 2 plus 3, but it should be noted that the transition after down 2-2 two, two won't work in no sword stance anymore. Aside from the standard ways of entering back turned like jumping or the opponent stepping, Yoshimitsu can also enter back turned via while standing 2, forward forward 4, forward forward 1 plus 2, forward forward 1 plus 4 neutral, meditation 3 plus 4, Indian meditation back or forward when at a distance. Yoshimitsu's back turn stance requires a lot of technical knowledge, but can open many options for him. At the very least, around 80% of Yoshimitsu's moves can be performed in back turned, and a lot of his existing moves change properties when in back turned. Some notable ones are back turn down 1 is an unparryable low with above average range. Against characters with big hitboxes, Forward forward 2-2 two, two into a guaranteed back turn down 1 is a high damage ender, though it will switch sides. On block, this is launch punishable only by Kazuya and Josie. Eddie and Akuma's 13 frame punishers will comedically whiff. <laughs> back turn down 2 is a generic down jab that, of course, crushes highs. At the wall, this can guarantee a while standing flash but only against certain characters. Back turn down 4 is a fast generic low kick and high crushes. At only minus 11 on block, this is considerably safer than a front facing down 4. Back turn 3 is a backflip that knocks down and guarantees a back turn down 1. On block, this is perfectly safe, even including the time it takes to turn back into front facing. Back turned down 1 plus 4 is his Harakiri stab, since he's already in back turned, there's less time for the opponent to react, especially with frame advantage, like after a blocked meditation 3 when at the wall. Back turned back 3 and back 4 are his evasive spins that also recover in back turned. Back turned up forward 4 is a generic low crushing hop kick, quite a bit slower than a regular hop kick, but deals more damage and is slightly safer on block at minus 12. Back turn flea has a huge, always active hitbox. On some angles, opponents can even get hit just trying to jab Yoshimitsu out of the stance. Back turned Kincho forward moves away from the opponent very quickly and can prove useful when trying to win via timeout. Yoshimitsu can do back turn moves almost instantly from meditation by doing certain directional inputs, which differ depending on the move you're trying to do. For example, to get back turned down 1 from meditation, do forward, down forward 1, or back, down back 1. To get a back turned hop kick from meditation, do forward, up forward 4, or back, up back 4. His normal moves can also be buffered during the transitions into back turned. You do the input as if you were still facing the direction you were previously in before turning your back. While most of them are useless, as their hitboxes are now in the opposite direction, there are a few hidden gems out there, like back turned bad stomach 
into Bad Stomach 3 or 4 for an advancing mid that low crushes. For whatever purpose it may serve, maybe just shits and giggles, but hey, playing Yoshimitsu is a lot about shits and giggles. Here is a rough guide for getting the back turn versions of all of Yoshimitsu's stances. Back turned meditation, which is technically a front facing meditation, do back turned kincho 4, 3 plus 4. Back turned kincho is only achievable via a buffered back turned crouch dash 1, 1 plus 2 and you can continue to loop into it with back turned kincho 4, 1 plus 2. For back turned Indian meditation, do down 3 plus 4 from back turned or from a back turned stance transition. Back turned flea is only achievable via back turned stance transitions and flea cross ups. Back turned dragonfly, you can get by doing up 1 plus 2 during back turned and naturally back turned stance transitions. And finally, back turned bad stomach, you can get by buffering a down back 1 plus 2 during a back turn transition. Overall, Yoshimitsu's stances hold a lot of potential, but to get the most out of them, it's important to understand their unique properties. For example, the reversal at the initial frames of Kincho stance. It's also important to know when and where to enter these stances, so meditation is best entered manually from a distance while no sword stance from a down 2-2, two, 2-plus-3 two, two combo ender. The final thing to take into consideration is the synergy between them. For example, Dragonfly, Flea, and Indian Meditation can all freely transition into one another to create a sort of stance dance. As always, confusing and intimidating the opponent with your unpredictability is the ultimate goal of any Yoshimitsu player. Yoshimitsu is an unorthodox character, as he doesn't have many solid, all-purpose tools. Yet, each move is perfect for the situation it is designed to be used in. It is up to the player, therefore, to recognize when these situations come up, and react accordingly. This is why Yoshimitsu is one of the most challenging characters in Tekken. He requires a lot of experience, adaptation, and creativity to play properly. Yoshimitsu excels in the mid-range, spacing the other character while looking for the perfect moment to strike. Yoshimitsu doesn't have many solid moves, so he's forced to rely heavily on the OG Tekken stuff like down fours, jabs, running threes, and so on, while looking for opportunities to use his more specialized tools. 
he has the ability to punish normally safe moves with his signature flash, as well as make the opponent think twice about pressing buttons, even when they're at frame advantage. And between flash, back three, back four, keen chore reversal, and his many weird crush moves, he has lots of options to get out of situations other characters cannot. He is also one of the only characters in the game with the ability to regenerate health. And of course, more health means more opportunities to get inside the opponent's head. Alternatively, Yoshimitsu can go toe-to-toe -to -toe up close, although he does go about it in a very unique way, as his close range game is heavily reliant on hard reads and conditioning. Using Flash as leverage to complement his offense, Yoshimitsu can condition opponents to freeze up with Flash traps and properly timed counter hit moves. So long as you don't get too predictable, his unorthodox moves, weird looking stance transitions, multi hit strings, and signature unblockables will help in instilling fear and hesitation on the opponent allowing you to really start freestyling on them. Yoshimitsu's Okizeme game is where he truly shines, thanks to a massive arsenal of ground-hitting moves and unblockables. This means scoring a knockdown can almost be as beneficial as a full combo for Yoshimitsu if he gets the right read. He's also got a lot of good moves to force a reaction out of a knockdown opponent resetting the situation and leading into even more wake-up options. And it gets even scarier when at the wall. In terms of execution, Yoshimitsu has relatively easy inputs with only a few precision combos or setups. And even then, the hard parts usually have simpler though less rewarding alternatives. However, what makes Yoshimitsu such an engaging character is also his most glaring weakness. The tools of his trade require a lot of specialized knowledge, hard reads, and on-the-fly decision-making. Playing against a solid opponent who is well-versed in Yoshimitsu's gimmicks can be a real challenge. Overall, Yoshimitsu is a master trickster, that seems to ignore the bounds of frame data at times and thrives on the user's creativity. Sidestep left, sometimes. Which way to step largely depends on how hard the Yoshimitsu player wants to party, but the general rule is to move left when up close. Do note that while stepping left evades most of Yoshimitsu's close ranged moves, it does make Flash a little easier to connect. From afar, however, you will want to move to the right. Also, Yoshimitsu's offensive stances like Kincho and Dragonfly are generally best stepped to the right. Be patient. Playing against a good Yoshimitsu can be very frustrating, but if your defense is solid, it can be just as frustrating for the Yoshimitsu player. When rushing down, play around Flash. Flash will still beat jabs even if you're at a small frame advantage, up to around plus three, but can only make contact with you at a very specific range, and even then it is launch punishable by most characters on block. So don't rush your offense. Most of Yoshimitsu's moves look stupidly vulnerable, even the frame data says so, but even that is usually part of a setup to bait you into some kind of counter hit launcher with crush properties. Slow, steady, and Patient is the key. Recognize patterns. Yoshimitsu has a lot of weird animations. Ones that look like he hasn't finished recovering that can bait unsafe punishers. Ones that look slow but are actually fast and might have some crush properties. Ones that have deceptive range and so on. 
a skilled Yoshimitsu player will use these misleading animations against you. It is almost impossible to familiarize yourself with every one of Yoshimitsu's setups and sequences. But keep in mind that most of Yoshimitsu's offense requires very specific setups to be effective. Sooner or later, the Yoshimitsu player will fall into routine and repeat themselves. Be on the lookout to recognize and expose these patterns as quickly and efficiently as possible. Keep calm. Second to winning in the most flamboyant way possible, instilling hesitation and panic is the end goal of every Yoshimitsu player. Not knowing what to do makes you vulnerable to mix-ups and frame traps. Try to keep calm and play solid. Yoshimitsu has terrible loads, and almost all of his safe moves are negative on block. Try to play as compact as possible. Let the Yoshimitsu overextend themselves, and then punish accordingly. Flash is the fastest attack in the game, clocking in at only 6 frames at its fastest version. Even still, this move has very clear weaknesses. It only hits at point-blank range, can easily be baited for whiff punishing, and is minus 15 on block, meaning most characters can launch punish it. Take extra precautions if your character relies on strings, as Yoshimitsu can sneak in a flash in between the hits. For example, Yoshimitsu can launch interrupt both of Chloe's mid-extensions from her 1-2 string. Be on the lookout for back 2-2, two, two, since you can duck the second hit and launch punish. Also, the second hit is minus 13 on block, but you'll only be able to punish it at the wall. Crouch dash 1, crouch dash 2, and fully crouch down forward 4 can all be punished heavily when blocked up close. Due to their range, however, many punishment options may whiff when shallow blocked, so be careful not to get baited. Up forward 2 can be launched on block, though do note that it can be cancelled. Tech traps are a staple in Yoshimitsu's game, so remember to vary how you wake up. If it comes down to it, there is no shame in taking a grounded hit if the alternative is eating a sword sweep into a full combo into more tech traps. Remember that if you get hit by an uncancelled up back 1 plus 2 1 at the wall, you can get in a guaranteed get up 4. Against sword sweep, remember it's unblockable and unparryable, so either back dash, low crush, or interrupt it. Sidestep up back 1 plus 2, and do not challenge the 1 plus 2 extension. Another staple of Yoshimitsu's game are his weird looking strings. Most Yoshimitsus will use multiple combination of these to either make opponents hesitate or bait them into flash traps. The safest bet is to simply wait until that one highly negative move and then punish it. However, giving Yoshimitsu too much respect often ends with you on the receiving end of something like a sword sweep. Don't sleep on these strings. All of the low kicks in the down back 3 series are launch punishable on block. Also, only the first two are a natural combo, and the rest can be blocked even if the first two hit. The mid kick is interruptible by any move that is 13 frames or faster. Though, do be especially careful of this when at the wall since it can splat. Down forward 1-2, down back 2. The second hit is a duckable high, but it can be tricky to launch punish since the window between the second and third hit is so small. Look through your character's move list to see if you have an attack that can crush the second hit but is fast enough not to get interrupted by the third hit. Yoshimitsu's own up forward 3 is a good example. While standing 2-1 leaves Yoshimitsu in Dragonfly stunts, and if blocked will allow you to float him for a combo. Yoshimitsu players will sometimes just do while standing 2 by itself. This puts him into a back turn state, so do be on the lookout for that. Almost all attacks from Yoshimitsu's stances, save for a few, are very linear. 
If he goes into a stance during Okizeme, then it's almost always a safe bet to side roll. Side walking is also a good option. Just be careful of fast moves like King Chol 1 plus 2, or homing moves like Dragonfly forward 2. Also, the stances themselves leave Yoshimitsu very vulnerable, unable to move or block. Just be careful how you approach these stances, especially back turned flee. Against meditation stance, do not press buttons as you approach. Look out for meditation into back turn down 1 or meditation 3. Against Indian meditation stance, sidestep before you approach. Look out for the teleports. Indian meditation 1 is only a threat if you're low on health, so sidestep it. Against Kincho stance, do not press buttons if he enters with frame advantage. Block and punish Kincho 3, while Kincho back 1 plus 2 can be sidestepped on reaction. Against Dragonfly stance, Crouching Guard beats Dragonfly 2, Dragonfly 3, Dragonfly 3 plus 4, and Dragonfly forward 2. Dragonfly 1 isn't really dangerous as long as you have the health to take a hit. The only real threat is Dragonfly 4, but that is slow enough to block while fuzzy guarding the other options. Against Flea Stance, back dash away and crouch to block Flea 2. Beware of Flea 1 into the Sword Sweep and Hop Kick mix up. Against Bad Stomach Stance, wait for the mist to disappear before you approach. Yoshimitsu will sometimes approach with moves that end in back turns like Ford Ford 4. Yoshimitsu is often at negative frames in these situations, but he does have options to get out safely. A fast ranged mid poke is a decent way to keep Yoshimitsu in check, as it will beat the common back turn lows and also back turned retreating crouch guard, while also being safe if he turns around to block it. Against no sword stance, try to find when the Yoshimitsu player likes to go for fully crouched down forward 3 and properly launch punish it. Also watch out for 2-1, especially when at the wall. If the Yoshimitsu player is being very predictable with this, try to duck the second hit and launch punish it. Do watch out as the hitbox for the mechanical arm stays out for quite a while. Yoshimitsu can heal himself in three ways. Of course, you don't want him to heal, but do be careful in your approach. Indian meditation stance renders him immobile while healing, but he can teleport and transition into other stances. If he starts spinning, it means he's input a command from the stance. Meditation stance leaves Yoshimitsu immobile while in back turn, but can easily be cancelled into a wide variety of options. Check out the stances section for more information. Yoshimitsu's last method of healing is his quarter circle forward to command throw. This is a very quirky throw. First of all, despite the fact that he grabs you with his right arm, it's broken with 1 plus 2. If broken, the animation will still happen, but instead, Yoshimitsu will lose health and you will gain health resulting in quite possibly the most awkward way to end a match ever. You win.
This combo section will be divided into two parts, one centered around his default stance and the other on no sword stance. Yoshimitsu's default or one sword stance combos are generally favored compared to their no sword stance counterparts, as they often deal higher damage and are generally easier to adapt to suit okizeme or wall carry on the fly. Yoshimitsu's main bread and butter works after down forward 2, up forward 3, 4 3, bad stomach stance 1 or 2, side step 2, sword sweep, counter hit up back 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2, low parry, or a float combo. This is an immediate forward 3 to start a screw, dash, down forward 1, 2, back to 1, 1 plus 2 to enter Kincho, and finish off with Kincho forward 2. For 4, 3, add a delayed hop kick before the screw, and skip the 2 after the down forward 1. For the float combo, also remove the 2 after the down forward 1. For sword sweep against bears, jack, and gigas, use crouch dash 2 as a screw starter instead of forward 3. Following that logic, the same combo will work after flash, up 3 plus 4, crouch dash 1, and the second hit of back 2 1, counter hit sidestep 1, and keen chaw 2. So basically, just change the initial forward 3 into a crouch dash 2 to start the screw, and then go into exactly the same combo. However, if you transitioned into Keen Cho after Crouch Dash 1 or the second hit of Back 2 1, simply use Keen Cho 4 to start the screw. The same combo can also be used after Forward Forward 4, but the screw will need to be instead initiated with Back Turn 2. After a counter hit Forward Forward 3, you'll need to use Down 2 1 as a screw starter and the weird position the opponent is put in will force you to remove the down forward 1 and the 2 jab. So here, the full combo is a down 2-1 to start the screw, dash, back 2-1, Kim Cho forward 2. And for when you've transitioned into Kim Cho stance, do Kim Cho 1 plus 2, back turned down 1. Note that the two combos after forward forward 3 are the exact same in no sword stance. Here is Yoshimitsu's main bread and butter from a combo that starts with a screw. So, after counter hit forward 2, the second hit of counter hit down forward 1 2, the second hit of counter hit while standing 1 2, counter hit back turn 2, counter hit crouch dash 2, counter hit keen chaw forward 2, counter hit dragonfly 4, counter hit dragonfly forward 2, or if the opponent gets put into a screw state while airborne, i.e. an instant screw, do dash, down forward 1, 2, 2, back 2, 1, keen chaw forward 2. For counter hit dragonfly forward 2, tap down to exit dragonfly and skip the 2-2 two, two jabs. For the instant screw, remove the second 2 jab. Going on to Yoshimitsu's main bread and butter from Crouch, after a Crouch down forward 4 on counter hit, counter hit up forward 2, counter hit Indian meditation stance 4, counter hit get up 3, and a slide punish, do while standing 4, Crouch dash 2 to start the screw, dash, down forward 1, back 2 1, Kim Cho forward 2. Do note that if you launch an opponent after a sidestep left, you'll need to remove the 2 jab. Let's move on to Yoshimitsu's alternate bread and butter, done after the following moves. Flee 1 plus 2, counter hit sidestep 4, counter hit Kincho 4, counter hit dragonfly 3, and a rage drive. This is 3 4 up to enter Dragonfly, Dragonfly 2, Dragonfly 4 to start the screw, dash and do forward 3 4 to enter Flea, and finish with a Flea 2. Against the Bears, skip the Dragonfly 2. 
For counter hit sidestep left 4, do crouch dash 2, dash, back 2, 1, keen chore forward 2. For the rage drive, dash in before starting the combo. If you transitioned into keen chore after counter hit sidestep 4 or counter hit keen chore 4, do keen chore 4 to start the screw and then just go into the main bread and butter. But with the counter hit keen chore 4 combo specifically, remember to remove the 2 jab. After a dragonfly 2 or while standing 2 1, do dragonfly 2, dragonfly 2, and you can squeeze in one more Dragonfly 2 after a short forward input, followed by Dragonfly 4 to initiate the screw. Then dash, enter Flea stance with forward 3 plus 4, and finish with Flea 2. Against the bears, you'll need to remove that last Dragonfly 2, and of course, the short forward input. After Flea 2, you have two separate combos, depending on whether Yoshimitsu crossed under the opponent or didn't. If Flea 2 doesn't cross under the opponent, do an instant while standing 4, down 2-1 to start the screw, dash and do forward 3 plus 4 to enter Flea, and finish with Flea 2. Do note that this combo won't work on Bears, Jack, and Gigas, since the while standing 4 will whiff. When Flea 2 does cross under the opponent, all you can get is a simple get up 3. Let's move on to default stance mini combos. After up forward 2, when up close and at the right angle, do a flash into the main bread and butter. After the last hit of counter hit 1 2 1, do down forward 1 plus 2, while standing 4, back 2 1, keen chore forward 2. After keen chore 3, do a fully crouch down forward 4. After up forward 3 plus 4, do a down 1 plus 2 to enter flee, flee 1 plus 2, down forward 1 2 to start the screw, dash, and then finish off with a forward 3 plus 4 into flee 2. Note that this combo won't work on the bears. Let's move on to no sword stance. Here certain properties are now different. For example, forward 3 plus 4 does not go into flee anymore which means it can be used as combo filler as opposed to just an ender. Yoshimitsu's main no sword stance bread and butter works after down forward 2, up 3 plus 4, sword sweep, bad stomach stance 1 or 2, count hit up back 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2, rage drive, low parry, and a float combo. Do forward 3 plus 4, Crouch dash 2 to start the screw. 4 3 plus 4, jab, 4 3 plus 4, and finish with down 2 2. For sword sweep, bad stomach stance 1 or 2, and the float combo, remove the first 4 3 plus 4. For count hit up back 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2, end your combo with a back 2 1 instead of a down 2 2. This bread and butter will also work after up 4 3, and a back turn to up 4 4 but you'll need to replace the first forward 3 plus 4 with an up forward 3. But do note that you'll need to remove the up forward 3 against characters with small hitboxes, and immediately go into a screw with forward 3 before continuing the rest of the combo. Also, after fully crouched down forward 3, count hit fully crouched down forward 4, count hit up forward 2, Count hit Indian Meditation Stance 4, Count hit Get Up 3, and a Slide Punish. Again, you can just do the bread and butter, just replace the first move with a while standing 4. For Count hit Fully Crouch Down Forward 4, end your combo with a back 2 1 instead of a down 2 2. For Fully Crouch Down Forward 3 against Bears, Jack, and Gigas, replace the while standing 4 with a while standing 1, and end your combo with a back 2 1. And for Gigas only, do the same after a count hit up forward 2. Let's move on to the no sword stance alternate bread and butter. This works after sidestep 2 and crouch dash 1. Do 4 3 to start the screw, 4 3 plus 4, 2, back 2 1, keen chore forward 2. 
If you transitioned into King Cho after Crouch Dash 1, or the second hit of Back 2 1, use King Cho 4 to screw, then just dash and continue with the rest of the combo. The alternate bread and butter also works after Back 2 1, Count Hit Sidestep 1, and King Cho 2 if you change the forward 3 into crouch dash 2, and also forward forward 4 if you use back turn 2 to start the screw. As for forward 3, add a delayed hop kick before the combo, and remove the 2 jab. Here's the no sword stance bread and butter for a move that immediately goes into screw, i.e. count hit forward 2, the second hit of count hit down forward 1 2, the second hit of count hit while standing 1 2, Count it back turn 2, count it crouch dash 2, count it king chow forward 2, and an instant screw. Here, do forward 3 plus 4, down forward 1, 2, back 2, 1, and finish off with king chow forward 2. With instant screw combos, remember to remove the 2 jab. After count it sidestep 4 and count it king chow 4, do crouch dash 2 to start the screw, 4 3 plus 4, 2, back 2 1, and finish with King Chaw forward 2. If you transition into King Chaw stance, do King Chaw 4 to start the screw, dash, and then just continue with the rest of the combo. Let's look at some No Sword Stance mini combos. After the second hit of No Sword fully crouched down forward 1 2, you have three options. Down forward 1 4, which gives you 51 damage and plus 4 on hit. No sword 2 1, which gives you 50 in the open, a knockdown or a wall splat. Or a rage drive, leading to a full combo and 105 plus damage. Here's an interesting thing to note about no sword flash. Since flash automatically returns Yoshimitsu to his default stance, just do the default bread and butter, except you can now squeeze in a forward 3 to screw if done quickly enough. Be careful not to mash though, since forward 3 3 might accidentally come out. Moving on to Yoshimitsu's Rage Drive combo for both his default and no sword stance. Yoshimitsu's Rage Drive is best used as a launcher, but when using it as combo filler, do it as early as possible in your combo to preserve damage from scaling, usually immediately after a launch and before the regular screw. For example, from an up forward 3 while in default stance, do an immediate rage drive, followed by a dash, down 2-1 to screw, side step left, forward 3 plus 4, and a flea 2 to finish off. Or after a down forward 2 while in no sword stance, do forward 3 plus 4, and then a rage drive. Forward 3 plus 4, 2-3 to screw, dash, 4, 3, plus 4, down 2, 2. Nearing the end now, let's take a look at Yoshimitsu's staple wall combos. Yoshimitsu's most damaging combo from his default stance is down 2, 2, 1. This is quite reliable as well, and will connect from just about any angle. You can also go for a jab into 5 down back 3s. This sacrifices a bit of damage for some dangerous mix-ups from Fully Crouch. In No Sword Stance, you can get both damage and Okizeme with 2-2 two, two into forward 1 plus 2, which also ends in crouching. Do note that this tends to whiff if the opponent is off axis, similar with 1 into the down back 3s. In this case, just go directly into the down back 3s. If Yoshimitsu wall splats from afar, he has enough time to do up forward 3 plus 4, back 1-4. Let's take a look at Yoshimitsu's stage-specific combo options. Down 2-2-1 two, two, can be used as a short wall carry and balcony or wall break. Down 2-2-1 two, two, down one is Yoshimitsu's main floor break move on Forgotten Realm. Let's finish the combo section with a few additional notes on how to maximize your damage and wall carry. Ending your combo in 4-3-plus-4 to flee 2 usually results in the most damage. 
this is especially true for no sword stance combos. Though, because Flea 2 is only available from default stance, a mid combo flash is necessary for no sword stance launches. Flea 2 also ends with Yoshimitsu on the floor, thus giving the opponent time to recover, and is generally best used only on infinite stages, since it's harder to adjust for wall distance. Against Jack and Gigas, ending with a forward forward 2-2 two, two to a back turned down 1 after the screw deals the most damage, but also switches sides. And finally, for some extra wall carry, remember that you can use multiple back 1s. Then, when close enough to the wall, just finish off with a back 2-1 for a splat into a wall combo. Though, do note that it will lower your damage output. 